Kim Hakimian. I'm the partnership coordinator and I'd like to welcome you to the Chattahoochee Nature Center. Today we're going to go out onto one of our trails and explore all the plants and animals that make the Piedmont region of Georgia their home. Well, welcome to the Piedmont region. You might be saying, well, Miss Kim, this looks an awful lot like an area I'm familiar with. It might look like your neighborhood, it might look like your backyard or an area near you or a park. And that's because all of us that live in the Milano metro area live in the Piedmont region. But today, what I want us to do is look at this region through the eyes of a naturalist. And to do that, we have to stop, slow down, and use our observation skills. What I'd like you to do is use I notice statements while we observe this region. Now, what are some things that you notice? Let's see if they match with some of the things that I noticed. And one of the things I noticed is that the land is not flat. It kind of rolls down. See it go down below and then it rolls back up. This rolling type of land where it doesn't get too high but it's not flat is called the Piedmont region. Besides the rolling landscape, there's a lot of trees. Most of them are deciduous, meaning they have leaves. But there are also trees here that are evergreen. They'll have the green leaves all winter long, including some of our pine trees with their needles. If you listen, what kind of sounds do you hear? I can hear some birds. I can hear a couple cars going by, and that's because this is a beautiful area to live, so of course there's lots of people. I hear somebody's dog barking. I can also hear the creek flowing. So in this area, we have a lot of small creeks that flow through. So lots of different animals and play, things that call this home. Let's look down to the ground. If you look down here, I notice a lot of this red Georgia clay. There are some rocks, but it's not super rocky. It's kind of a good mix between rocks and soil. And most of the soil is this hard red Georgia clay. There might be some good black soil on top, but underneath we've got Georgia red clay. So all these things, this red clay, this rolling hills, the temperature, the rain, create a certain habitat. And that habitat then determines what plants are going to grow in it. The types of plants we see ultimately determine what kinds of animals are going to be in the Piedmont region. And as we listen, we can definitely tell there's all kinds of birds. Usually I can hear a scampering of a squirrel through the leaves. There's definitely humans as we hear the cars. But there's another animal that shares this region with us, and I'd like for you to meet it. And that's our black rat snake. And here I am with our black rat snake. This black rat snake is one of our non-releasable animals that we have at the Chattahoochee Nature Center. Now, Chattahoochee Nature Center has a wonderful wildlife clinic where if you find an injured reptile or bird or prey, you can bring it here and our wildlife staff look at it, evaluate it, take care of it, and their goal is always to put it back outside in its home. But sometimes the animals have injuries that prevent that from happening and those animals become non-releasable. This particular snake had an injury way back on its tail. In 2002, it was found in our wildlife clinic and it had sustained damage to its tail, making it hard for it to use a defense mechanism. One of the things that the black snakes do uh, to protect themselves from predators is they take their tail and they stick it up and they shake it. Why would they want to do that, huh? That's right, rattlesnakes shake their tails. And so this snake likes to pretend that it looks like a rattlesnake, saying, oh, you don't want to mess with me. Look at me, I'm dangerous. And really it's not, it's not a venomous snake at all, but it's a way to protect itself. And since this snake can't protect itself like that anymore, it's considered non-releasable. 
And what I'd like us to do, it's kind of neat that now we have this snake as a non-releasable snake and it's used to me holding it, we get a chance to look at it closer. So let's use those naturalist skills again and see what we notice about this black rat snake. Now some of the things that I notice about this snake right away, I'm sure all of you said this, I mean its name has it in it, right? Is that its color is black, okay, it's black coloring. This black coloring can be this dark. Um, you might even notice some of the patterns it still has in it. Usually black rat snakes are white on the bottom. But I, my question to you is, having this black color, how would this be an adaptation for living in the Piedmont? Let's think about that a minute. First of all, snakes are usually found on the ground. So if we put this snake close to the ground, does that help you get an idea? Black rat snakes are also really great tree climbers. Oh my gosh, did you hear the owl? And so if we put it near the tree, that's right, I can hear you all yelling the word now. It's camouflage! That's right, it blends in. Its color helps the black rat snake stay hidden from predators and also hide from any of its prey, helping it sneak up on it. Besides the black color, some of you may have noticed how large this snake is. Most snakes in Georgia are small. I've got here a piece of plastic and inside this plastic is a skeleton from a snake. We put it in plastic so that the bones don't move around. But this size, you can see, is much smaller than this snake. And this is the size how, that most snakes are in Georgia. What would be large be an advantage for? Yeah, this animal can eat some larger animals. So I guess the question is, what do you think it eats? One of the things it would eat would be rats. And I'm sure you guessed that from its name, black rat snake, huh? It would eat other rodents such as mice or squirrels. But then the other cool thing is because this snake has some special adaptation on its belly, you can see it's got different scales than it has on top. Those scales are going to allow the snake to climb up the side of these trees. Why would a snake want to climb to the top of a tree? That's right, there's food up there. There might be squirrels. The other thing that's up there are birds, and especially this time of year, their nests have eggs in them. And rat snakes love to eat eggs. And so they're gonna use that adaptation to allow them to climb trees and get to their food. So speaking of food, how does this snake find its food? I bet you notice something that it's been doing to help it try to figure out. And of course, he's not, uh, she's not doing it now. But what, what she does is she sticks out her tongue. Maybe you noticed that before, that she was sticking her tongue out. I'd like everybody to give that a shot. Go ahead, stick your tongue out. And when you stick it out, wave it around. When you do the adults, go ahead. You know you want to do it too. Uh-huh. And when you stick it out, can you kind of feel the air? And the air has all these little particles in it that land on her tongue. She then brings her tongue back into her mouth, and there's an organ inside of her mouth called the Jacobson's organ. And those particles then um, are go to, send a message to the organ, and the organ tells her which direction to go to find that prey and find the food. So let's see how she finds that food. Let's go figure that one out. So how does the snake use that tongue to find its food? Well, if you can imagine a snake down here on the ground, it's slithering in between all the leaves. It sticks its tongue out, feels the air, no food that way. Oh, there might be food this way. And so it follows along until it gets really close. Let's say it's really looking this time for a mouse. Just as it's getting ready, it waits, it gets really still, and then it strikes. And when it strikes, it uses those sharp teeth that it has to hold on to that mouse and then wraps its body around the mouse, squeezing it. 
That type of method of killing prey is called a, being a constrictor. A lot of snakes in Georgia are constrictors. After it wraps itself around that mouse, it makes sure that the mouse is no longer breathing and then swallows it whole, and then that's how it gets its meal. So people often ask me, Miss Kim, how do I live with snakes so in the same habitat as me? And what I tell them is you've got to think about it as visiting somebody's house. Whenever you go to visit somebody, a friend, you go and you knock on their door, right? You don't just walk into their house. You knock on the door before you enter. So you've got to think of outside as being the snake's house. And what we've got to do before we enter is we've got to knock. And the way you knock is you make some noise. You kind of shuffle your feet. Let the snake know that you're coming into its house. And when you let snakes know that you're coming into their house, they move away. Remember, we are big. We're seen as a predator to snakes. And so the snakes are going to want to move away from a large predator and hide. So that's the best way to avoid snakes in your backyard. Well, thank you for exploring the Piedmont region with me. We learned all about some, some of the trees and some of the animals that call this region home. We even got a chance to meet a black rat snake close up. I'm gonna encourage you to step outside your door. Look around the Piedmont region where you live and see what kinds of plants and animals that you can find. Once you discover some things, share your discoveries with us. When you go on to social media, use the hashtag CNC Nature and share your discoveries. Thank you so much for joining me and get your nature on.